and I'm on Courtney because I'm going to dive on some shipwrecks today. It's an intimidating shape. Um, Mishmash, recycled wood, whatever I have left. Overhead cabinet and hope it works. I love drinking cider. It's not quite alcoholic yet. I think I need to add some yeast. But it's not vinegar, so... Welcome to this week's episode, everybody. So glad you're here. Question. Does this make me a pirate? So Vancouver Island has a whole bunch of sunken ships that they sunk as breakwaters. Brian and I are going for a dive. I'm so excited. It looks like it's going to be a really lovely day. <gasps> hey. I'm gonna wait to show you at the very last moment. <gasps> wow! Boats, 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 boats. It's just after sunrise and we came now because the tide is pretty high. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> oh, baby, baby. Bushery. Dorsal thing. It's stuck. Oh. Oh, that is not not comfortable. It's cute, though. <laughs> oh, man. I feel sexy with this hairdo. Soft butch. Mm -mm. <laughs> ah. Oh yeah. Easy. A perfect fit. <laughs> In the theme of pirating, it was incredibly exciting to get an opportunity to go diving with these ghost ships, skeletons of their former past. There are 14, possibly 15 old ships that have been used to make a breakwater. It is very exposed to southerly winds and increasing tidal swells which made it very tricky and dangerous to dump and tow logs to the sawmills. Wow! Wow! These ships were sunk in the late 1930s. The next 25 years, the number of ships increased to 14, including old whaling boats, schooners, navy frigates, freighters and tugs.
Wetsuits do make your faces look really funny. They squish them all up. But especially when you come out and your face is frozen. Yeah. Post swim snacks. Because we had hopped in the water early in the morning to catch the high tide, so by mid-afternoon it was much lower and I had not had enough yet. In true pirate style, I had to navigate the waters in my own vessel as well as lurking around underwater with my friend Tracy and go take another look at the wrecks from above shore. That's amazing. Look at my muscles growing on it. Oh, it's so cool! <laughs> Boat! <laughs> yeah, a little bits of wooden, the last bits, because there's a tiny, tiny bit of roof over it, but. My head or for the boat? Oh, that's so cool! Because I think that was so fun. So Taking the van on another adventure. Yay! <laughs> We've missed so many turns today. Oh dear. In other news, I wanted to show you where I am parked today, and it is beautiful. I gotta do that talk to the camera thing where you tell people where you are. I thought you were talking to me. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I'm like, why is it? Hi! <laughs> it's my friend Tracy, who's traveled all the way to come for a paddle with me, and maybe, maybe, woo, tomorrow. Go to a distillery. <laughs> this one's very pretty. That looks easier to walk on. Look at the size of these trees. It's not for them to blow, eh? Yeah. yeah and, and then you want to see that, eh? Yeah, a day like this would be spot pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty cool though. Ooh. Like it looks like raw. And the only thing that is like the hair herring. Yeah, herring roll? Maybe? Look, it's just like, there's, it's just all eggs. There's no sand? No. Ew. Where's the bottom? That's how deep it is. Wow. That's crazy. I'm assuming it's the herring. It's herring
<laughs> I bet I look like a goose. Yeah, but so do I. <laughs> hey, you're just gonna have a laugh sometimes. Any of you YouTube people, geocache fanatics? We're gonna find one, hopefully. Like 200 and something meters. Trace is the expert on, ooh, look at these guys. That's real pretty. Maybe the ge geocache is this. Oh, ta-da! <gasps> Look! I'm glad we got lost. <laughs> we did get lost and we found out this instead and it's beautiful. You first or me first? You just gotta get to that cross bit. I made it! <laughs> Hi everyone! Right, I got the motivation up to get moving and doing some work. And I was going to put up some more ceiling and then I was like, well, before I do that, I should build the overhead cabinets. <sighs> That's a job and a half. So I just I gotta figure out how to do it. We're gonna do with some of this stuff and some of the scraps that I've got left lying around and hobble together some mishmash recycled wood whatever I have left overhead cabinet and hope it works wish me luck my old battery powered Ryobi has bitten the dust and it doesn't work anymore I do have this guy which is a plug-in power saw but I really need to get a new battery one this guy is really powerful, has a bit of a kickback and is difficult to difficult to use when making like little cuts and stuff. And I don't have the money at the minute to afford to buy more power tools, which really kind of sucks. So is when you live off grid, I'm not always going to be parked here where I'm building. I'm going to be out in the forest and need to cut things or make repairs. So it's a bit of a future shopping list thing, I think. screw that's a start that's a big enough cabinet where you don't have enough sets of hands so you use pieces of wood to prop it up to check whether it will work this piece of wood is wide enough that we have enough to screw it to and then this is how I'm going to screw the back side of this to the wall so I'm going to take this down screw hundreds of these all the way along and then I can put the rest of these roof tiles in I managed to get the bottom piece of plywood up I had to do it off camera because I needed all 17 of my hands it's high enough in relation to my head that I don't feel crowded in but there's plenty of storage in there it, they're deep, plenty deep enough. And with the lights under here, it's gonna be nice and bright working down here on my countertops. This is gonna sit 
There. I have spared you the delightful sounds of me cutting plywood. We have the end. Wow, this is great. I'm so happy. Can we take a moment to appreciate the wonderful new overalls I have? And it's really my mid thirties. I think I'm past mid thirties now. But like clothes that feel comfortable. I just like these and I think they look and feel great. So I just wanted a moment to celebrate with y'all. There's so many local orchard, apple orchards around here and last year I missed out so this year I am determined to make some apple cider. Hey. This is exciting. I love drinking cider but sometimes it really sucks with the amount of preservatives and sulfites that are in our booze so I thought why not make my own <laughs> there's a couple ways to make apple cider and let's be clear we're talking about hard apple cider not the non-alcoholic type the first way is to add a champagne yeast so I'm gonna try and do it a natural foundation firm natural fermentation way yeah. and then if you're trying this at home you can't just use any old apple juice because it's been pasteurized or it's got other preservatives added into it so either juice your own apples or see if you can get some straight from an orchard where it's just fresh pressed and nothing's been added or done to the juice there we go you can see the natural gases are escaping from inside the airlock they say to store your cider in a cool dark place so since my new van is still in a state of construction, it is nice and cool. And to make it dark, I'm gonna wrap Freddy the cider bug up in my sleeping bag to keep him at an insulated even temperature. Hi, make me some cider. Thank you. Look at all those pretty bubbles. This attaches into said drill. Yeah, it's not quite alcoholic yet. I think I need to add some yeast. But it's not vinegar, so we haven't lost. No. <laughs> you want to take? I mean, it smells really good. Well, it's like cider you'd give to kids. Yeah. To get them started drinking at their <laughs> age. <laughs> A totally normal thing to think and do. <laughs> I mean, yes. I'm pretty excited about getting this job done. It's been a while coming, and this bottle has been precariously surviving amongst my van build. So it's about time that we got it into some smaller bottles, which means we can start drinking it, giving it away, tasting it, see how it goes. This is my original van stove when I started living in a van. Getting all the bottles prepared is the slow part of the process. Getting the booze out of the bottle, out of the carboy into the bottles is going to be the fast part of the process. Ah, I'm going to look. Hot water and 
try and kill all the bugs. As I say, it's clean number one. Still going, but at least the sun came out now. Oh, hot, hot, hot. I'm nervous. Bottles are all clean. My siphon is all clean. We've still got some daylight. It's my first time making apple cider. Made meat a couple of times before with average success. So yeah, this is the amount of bottles that I had the energy to clean. So we'll see whether that cowboy needs more bottles and there's some left over, which is fine, it can just stay in the carboy, or whether we fill up all of these bottles. But once we start siphoning, it's gonna go bang, 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 and they all wanna fill up. So I've gotta get all the cameras ready, put them all in the right place, and then just forget that they're there and do the thing. If anyone's good at math, I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, seven hundred and fifty milk bottles. Oh, this one's tight. And four of these, which are either two fifty or four fifty, one of the two. Somebody do the math for me and leave it in the comments. And then there's still that much cider left. Making cider, making cider. Well, now it is bottled. All but that last bit, little bit there. <sighs> that was a very productive afternoon. Let's wash them all now. <clears throat> Yay! Cider. Not much, but a good start. I did it. I did it. Brood cider in a van. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Hi everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Packed a lot in there. We had a lot of fun. Did a whole heap of different things. And I kind of have been thinking about this pirate theme as I weave it into videos here and there. Uh, maybe because it has something to do with the step van or that maybe, maybe my step van is is a land pirate ship. I don't know. It's an idea. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps us out a lot. And hit the subscribe button if you want to see and get notified about the next videos. The next one will be a lot about the step van. I owe you a big update. Lots and lots has changed. And if you want to know what's happened with the step van already, there's updates on my Patreon right now, behind the scenes. They're all up to date and current with, oh, some of the most beautiful things that I've put in this van. Oh, and the name of the step van. The step van has a name now. What? So yes, thanks so much for watching. Tell me the thing that you enjoyed the most and I'll see you on the video next week. Bye.